Hello guys and girls and welcome to GBA Week 11. We are facing off against the Kansas City Draft Chiefs, coached by none other than Jolt from the Token Minorities. It's a rematch. Last time we did lose to him, mainly because he brought some very fancy and creative and effective prep at that as well. And for example, the Moonblast or Moonblast Mega Venusaur, which had Nature Power, which turned in my Mysterate into Moonblast, and his Triple Scarfa Core of Arcanine, uh, Gardevoir, and who was the third Scarfa? Who was the third Scarfa? Gardevoir, Arcanine, and it was not so here, not Mega Venusaur, so what are the other ones he brought? What was the other one he brought? Mad Dragon, there we go, and Hell Dragon. Triple Scarfa Core of that, which caught me off guard, and so we are. Obviously, uh, want to revenge on Jolt, but this match is very important for other reason as well. If you're following me throughout the season, you know that these last two weeks are detrimental for my chance at getting into playoffs. Currently, I am in the playoff spot, uh, theoretically, since I'm ahead of both Geo and Joey. We three are basically fighting for the two playoff spots. One of those three will not get into the playoffs, and I'm definitely not planning on being one of those. Currently, I am ahead. But we are so close on record that if I lose two matches, or even only one match, I might be out of playoffs. So it all depends on how the uh, other people played. Uh, mainly on how Geo's game went, because uh, depending on how that goes, the Geo MV match, uh, I might actually already be clinched for playoffs. I know already the result of that match, I won't spoil that till the end of the battle. So yeah, at the end of the battle, I will talk more about my playoff chances and all this good stuff. But uh, yeah. Let's make the history of your match. We need to win, not only to get revenge with Jolt, and, but also to solidify us in the, our current leading spot in this three-man playoff race. Because if we lose, there's a very high chance that we are out of playoffs. And if we win, there's a very high chance we get in. So nothing decided yet, and probably depends still on the last week. But like I said, I will talk more about it after the match. Now we focus on this match and not on future matches. And we can see the team Jolt brought. Uh, before we go into that, of course, the usual shoutouts at the beginning. Usual sh uh, the shoutouts go to one person only, which is Blue Rogue. He recorded this match for me and he jammed this team for me. His links will be in the description. He is in leaks as well, so you can check out some fancy indie content on that channel. His stuff will be in the description. Definitely check him out. Give him a look. Give him a, give him a like. All this good stuff. But uh, yeah, now going to more into team preview. I like and see the team I brought. You would know more about detail about that. As usual, I did upload a team builder yesterday. Link to that in the description as well. There you can see what what basically my team is, what his threats are, what my threats are, EVs, movesets, blah blah, what I plan going into this match. Uh, but for all which don't have time for that, really short overview. We have a physically defensive uh, Capofini, uh, Tailwind, Expert Belt. Um, Tornadus, Choice Scuffed, Stealth Rock and Cobalion, then 4 attacks, in Power Grass, Mega Manetric, uh, Special Defensive, Assault, Lester, Delphox, and last but not least, uh, Leftovers, especially bulky, I want to say not really Special Defensive, especially bulky, Kira Black. Looking at the opponent, he bought the Air Dragon, the Durant, Aerodactyl, Venusaur, Seismitoad, and Gardevoir, so his team did change quite a lot. If you look at my team, only one one changed, I have Delphox now instead of Gengar. Looking at the opponent's squad, he brought the Aerodactyl and the Durant instead of Arcanine and Celesteela. So no Celesteela, he brought his other Steel in that, so I'm happy with that. Happy no Celesteela, but Durant is a threat I have to prepare for. If he's Hustle, he just wrecks my team basically with the coverage he has. But of course, there's also a mischance, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. If he's not Hustle, my team can deal way easier with that, but of course, his moves hit. <laughs> then Aerodactyl, which is a threat as well. By the way, now that I see Aerodactyl, I want to talk about my Mega Manetric. If you want to remember my Team Builder, my Mega Manetric is still the same threat as the Team Builder, and that is why I made a mistake in the Team Builder. It was not only to outspeed the Duran, it is to speed creep an Aerodactyl that speed creeps my Tornadoes. I watched a few of Joel's Team Builder, and he likes to speed creep as I usually do, so I went a bit more aggressive with my speed creeping, and my Mega Manetric actually outspeeds uh, uh, an Aerodactyl that speed creeps my Tornadoes by one point, which would make sense since Aerodactyl doesn't outspeed a Manetric, or can't if I'm Max with Jolly. So the next thing you want to outspeed is the Tornadoes, and blah blah. You basically know how speed creeping works, even aggressive speed creeping. So yeah, we'll probably leave a comment in the team builder as well on uh, on that, so you don't have to wait till this upload to find out. But either way, that's why it's still a modest uh, Mega Manetric. So yeah, Adrekel, still big threat. Um, Edgequake, very nice to coverage with my team. Finny doesn't, Finny is like the best thing I have to take it on, because Cobalion is of course a great rock resist, but doesn't like taking Earthquakes. Same with Tornadus. Good ground resist, doesn't like taking rockets. And then we have uh, Manetric, which doesn't like ground hits, and the other two don't like rockets. And 
Yeah, Fox doesn't like Garfield as well. So in Earthquake, Stone Age, Eric Record is actually a decent threat. Then the Mega Venusaur could be a similar set to last time. I actually expect him to be a similar set to last time because he brought the Hydreigon again. So I'm thinking this once again going to be a Choice Scarf Hydreigon plus the Nature Power Venusaur. Then Cyclops definitely going to be dead. Then the Gardevoir. Could be once again Scarf, could be Specs, could be like a more defensive variant. I will have to scout for that in the match itself. But uh, yeah, seeing that he brought once again the Hydreigon Venusaur core, I'm fairly certain that he, the uh, f f first turns will go similar to last time. And if not, I will still lead with my Tapofini because, like I said, if I'm expecting Hydreigon, I beat that. I beat the Aerodactyl if he wants to get rocks, and I can uh, beat the uh, Scythe as well. The only thing which really would which would scare me out are the Durant, Mega Venusaur, and the Gardevoir, which I'm definitely not expecting to lead. Uh, Durant is pr definitely more of a late game sweeper thing with either Agility or Choice Scarf, something like that. Mega Venusaur is uh, probably a more defensive variant. If he leads with that, his Nature Potion is going to won't work. And Gardevoir is like, I mean, Gardevoir is a decent lead, I guess, but it doesn't really beat anything at full health. It is very nice at getting good damage in, but it doesn't really beat anything at full health. And I still have my uh, Delphox, which is also switching to that thing. Either way, that's why I decided to lead with my Fini. And we'll now see what Jolt decides to lead with. He has a nice pose, he has a red shirt and a red hat. It's Pokemon Trainer Jolt challenging us to a match. And like you can see, we sent out Walnut getting up our Misty Drain in a minute. And we see that Trefsteel hits the field and this is indeed the Hydreigon. So deja vu from last match. And just as last time we bring this de uh, this deja vu uh, to the full extent, I click once again Mage's Man is predicting him to switch out because obviously he doesn't want to stay in and switch out his Mega Venus. So he does go for U-turn. From the damage I can tell that he is uh, a jolly no attack variant. He does get a crit though. Mage, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can see at the damage. <laughs> Not really a lot. He does switch into his Mega Venusaur, and we do hit the Nature's Madness, and this is just exactly, basically, this, this first turn was exactly what happened in our rematch, but this time, I am prepared for his Venusaur. If you watch my team builder, you know that my Kyurem is bulky enough to take two Moonblasts from a modest Venusaur, so I am just gonna switch out into said Kyurem. He may think I, this time I am prepared for the Moonblast, uh, or think it will come out, and that switch into something else, so we might go for another move, but even if he goes for Moonblast, I can take those hits and then I can proceed to go for an Ice Beam and yeah, get some good damage on him. He does of course make him off, seeing that he does stay in. Let's see if we can fully recreate basically our first match and him going for Nature Power or oh, that's something else. He does go for something else, he does go for the Leaf Seed, so an overall less aggressive, more safer play because it was pretty safe that I would switch out the Leaf Seed, of course hits everything on my team since I didn't block the Lorantis. So I'm just clicking the safe Ice Beam right here, getting some good damage on him. I won't KO him if he's uh, more bulky, depending on the spread, I might KO him from this range. But he does just switch out into Toad, which turns out to be his size Toad, which of course will chew this hit up since we uh, since we expected this thing to be specially defensive, and from the damage we can definitely tell that is indeed a specially defensive size Toad, and he will even get more health back from first his leftovers, and then of course the Leaf Seed recovery from my hero Black. Right here, I do decide to right away switch out once again back into my Fini because I don't want uh, this thing to get rocks up. Rocks are very bad for my Kyurem, uh, very bad for my Tornadus, they're very bad for my Delphox. I brought all my rocks weaknesses, so I don't want rocks on the field if he brings them up. I definitely want to defend them right away, but he actually decides to go for the knockoff, which of course does little damage, but it gets rid of our leftovers, which is kind of annoying. So, right here, he might switch back into his Venusaur, he might just stay in getting off rocks. I want to keep my Fini in versus this... Uh, Size to prevent rocks and just go for Nature's Madness, which of course will do more damage since we already know this is a more split death. Size of Moonblast one will be doing like 20 to 25 percent. Let me go for one, uh, one Nature's Madness. He actually goes for Infestation and Trap Sneeze. So Jolt has already nice a short already a nice trap. This uh, Size of seems to be built to take on my Finny, or at least trap it, which makes uh, his head Reagan a bit annoying. I'm of course trapped. Get some infestation damage on me, and yeah, since I'm trapped, I have basically no business doing anything else than attacking this thing. Rocks are still not on the field, so I just click Nature's Madness once again because it does still more than the Moonblast, and we bring him down to around uh, 20 something percent with leftovers. He's around 27 30 ish percent, and he just goes for the Earthquake, which you can see from this. It doesn't do a lot. Uh, since I'm physically defensive, he's definitely not uh, uh, offensively invested, but because I don't have leftovers and because of the infestation. I am actually in range next time to die to an Earthquake plus another infestation according, uh, depending on rolls. I do go for Moonblast here because it is a 2 hit KO from this range. I don't need to go for another Mage's Madness in case he wants to switch out reverses thing, whatever. He does go for the Earthquake match here. Let's see if we can get a lower roll and maybe lift with the infestation damage. And no, we actually die because he got a crit right here. And yeah, I actually don't know what the roll was. I know it, it was a roll, but not, it was probably in his favor. 
so I'm not really mad at that crit. I think he would have probably died either way through the infestation damage next turn. But right now he's very low. I just go to, into something that can kill him basically. And I wanted something that can, that doesn't bait out the Durant. I don't want the Durant hitting the field. And the one thing which can do that very nicely is my Delphox. So I decided to go to my Delphox right here and I do decide to just fire off a Psychic. Which is basically the safest move overall. The only immunity he has is the... Uh, Hydreigon, which I actually can still beat because Dark Pulse, if you remember, Team Builder does not turret KO me. And Dazzling Gleam would have, my, would have been my preferred move right here, but it actually doesn't kill this Bedeath Titan from this range since I'm so little invested in my special attack set. So, let's go for Psychic. He thankfully does stay in, so Psychic is gone. That po hopefully means no rocks. He still has the Aerodactyl though, which is annoying, which exactly he will go in right here. And right here, I have a hard decision to make because right now it's basically a 50 50. Um, will he go for Earthquake or will he go for Stone Edge? Both will, depending on the spread, kill, kill my Delphox. If he's uh, more bulky, then Earthquake might not kill me. Stone Edge will kill me either way, even if he's a more bulky variant. And if he's like Life or something like that, then even EQ will kill me. If I want to pick an EQ, I can, for example, go into my Tornadus or something like that. If I want to pick the Stone Edge, I can go on my Cobalion or something like that. In the end, it doesn't really matter what I go into here after some thinking because if I, let's say he goes to Earthquake and goes to Nades, he's still off three, so he can't just go for Stone Edge and boom, he dies me. So I could the only thing I could do is basically pivot around and after that go into Cobalion. Or if you want to go if he does go for the uh, Stone Edge and go for Cobalion, he can just go for the Earthquake after that. So I do some cards right here. And I still did not show that my Cobalion is Scarf, and I actually decided to go my Cobalion as my middle ground switch because it takes both a Stone Edge and an Earthquake. Earthquake of course doing way more than a Stone Edge. And I might even pick a Zoo Trap right here. So Cobalion is my best switch because Choice Scarf, I will definitely have speed sparring this Choice Scarf as well, which I'm not expecting from his Aerodactyl. And I can KO him with the Iron Head, potentially, depending on his spread and all this good stuff. But he just go for the Earthquake right here. So, yeah, the Tornadus pivot play was probably a better one, but I didn't want to risk my Tornadus because I still need for Tailwind shenanigans. Like I said, I can lift it and he turns out to be Life Orb. Now, going at the Kark, if this is a fully offensive Aerodactyl, and from the damage I can tell that he is, uh, is an offensive Aerodactyl, then Iron Head is a guaranteed KO right here. So the only thing I have to hope right here is that the bluff or the whatever works, basically, that he thinks I just predicted the stone or something like that. And that I can catch him with my Choice Scarf Cavalier. Let's see if it works this way. It does work. He does stay in. This time I am catching off guard with the Scarf. But he lives on a sliver of health. And no, I lose my Cavalier to a second Earthquake. Thankfully, Aerodactyl does go down to this Earthquake. But I lose my Cavalier as well. Which was a very, very important member of my team. Because if that guard was Choice Scarf, if that had Dragon as Choice Scarf, Cavalier was my best way to revenge kill both of them. The good thing is... The Aerodactyl goes down, we talked about after the match. He was pretty HP invested because he didn't hit enough feet because it's so uh, so naturally bulky. So he uh, he had a what well, he had basically a 30% chance on living that Iron Head and I had 70% chance on killing him. So sadly, I do not get this roll. Right here, I do decide to just go into my tornadoes. Because that is theoretically faster than this whole team, and I can see what on this team is playing to scarf or not. And I can take a Tailwind up, and if he goes into Mega Venus, so I can just Hurricane that. If he goes into Durant, I can just Heatwave that. Like I said, Durant is currently, I think now that Aerodactyl is gone, the biggest threat to my team. And actually, Hydreigon is a big threat as well, since now, not only my Fini is gone, but my uh, Kobalion as well. So my both my Dark Resists are basically gone, and my Dragon Resists as well. The only thing I have now for the... Uh, for the watch call for the dragon the space which can live a live a dark pose i have a lot of but the only thing which can live a draco is my delphox so i need to keep my delphox now if they're healthy but uh, yeah he brings out his guard war i don't want to uh, scout if this thing is scarf or not i bet he don't have the u-turn so i'm just going to go hard into my mozilla which should be able to take any hit even uh choice backs it i'm not expecting to pick him right away and go for the move blast he does just go for move blast and you see that this that did nothing. My Mozilla eating that up, that's definitely uh, not a Spex one. That could be Choice Scarf, could be like just non boost or something like that. But I do just fire off a Dazzling Gleam right here, trying to catch the uh, thing. What the thing? The uh, Hydreigon on the Switch because my Delphox actually has a very nice uh, time versus team right now. If you look at his team, he has the Gardevoir left, which was in Locking the Moonblast, the Hydreigon, which dies to Dazzling Gleam, the Venusaur, which dies to Psychic, and the uh, Durant, which dies to Fire Move. So my Delphox is very nice, not only defensively, but offensively. Uh, Offensively as well versus team the only thing which can basically take a hit from this if I go for the right move being the guard war Which doesn't like taking uh, which I basically wall if he doesn't go for shadow ball So which he did in this scenario he did switch out so most likely he did uh, He is choice lock but anyway, he does go to Mega Venus sword so uh, he do does catch me here not switching side dragon Which probably would have been a pretty risky play on his part but uh, either way 
Um, what do I want to say? We get out right here. Uh, I just go for a psychic because I either want to kill this Mega Venusaur because he might actually think that I'm choice locked myself, but he does the smart play just switching out into a side dragon and yeah, basically being immune to my psychic sadly. But since he doesn't, like, he could know that I'm very special bogey or salt nested, so I just fire off a Dazzling Beam right here. I'm just playing very safe with my Death Fox right here. Don't want to overbreak because, like I said, Death Fox is very important right here in this match still. Just go for U turn. And uh, yeah, basically he's gonna switch out back into his Mega Venusaur, into his Desert Beam. So he did for, uh, successfully scout it basically. Right now, he had, this scouting was very smart on Jolt's part. He got very little damage on this thing. Basically, the only thing which happened was his Mega Venusaur took two Desert Gleams, but he got good on information. The one information being I'm not Choice Lock, the other information being I'm very sociable and I seem to be confident to live a hit from the uh, Hydreigon. So I gotta say, that was very nice scouting on his part. But right now, I'm just playing it safe because. I don't think that Jolt can afford to make a mistake with my Delphox, so at some point he will have to sack him on. So I just go for a Psychic right here, and he indeed does decide to sack his uh, uh, Venusaur right here. Didn't want to go for another Desert Glee right here, trying to be very aggressive predicting the Hydreigon, because the my, my Delphox is very important, like I already mentioned. He does switch out though into his Durant right here, which of course is faster than me, and I could die to a Crunch or, uh, or a Rock Slide right here. So I do just hard switch out into my Mr. Bro, which could take both these hits and of course I'll speed kill him with a heat wave. He does just go for the uh, for the what you call noise absolute though and turns out to be a leftovers variant. Okay, that is a bit scary. I definitely have to heat wave this thing to break the substitute. But the only thing he can have to kill me is Rock Slide, which is very inaccurate with hustle and uh, natural missing chance of Rock Slide actually. So I have to break the sub with something and Tornado thankfully is in, which is faster. And like I can see right here, he does go for the Iron Head, and from this damage we can tell that he is indeed a Hustle Berry, because look at that, that damage, that did a lot. And uh, yeah, basically Tornadus can't take any hit. Thankfully, all his Rockers are dead, so I can keep my Mr. Bro around. After that, I do just go for a second Heat Wave, trying to catch something on the... Oh wait, do I, or do I go for the... I think I go for the Tailwind right here. Yes, never mind me. I do go actually for the Tailwind right here, because he was definitely switching out. And he could have switched out into his Gardevoir potentially or anything. He could have switched out into his uh, Hydreigon or he could have switched out or he could have stayed in. I don't think he would have stayed in because I already shot Heat Wave and in both Gardevoir and Hydreigon are decent switches to the Heat Wave since the one resists, the other one is pretty decently bulky on the outside. So I decided actually to go for the Heat for the Tailwind right here because now that Tailwind is up, my Delphox outspeeds everything and it close to kills everything. The only thing it doesn't kill is the Gardevoir, which of course I wall since it's not choice back, so Shadow Ball is doing like 30% and I'm still very healthy. Now though the Hydreigon comes in and I don't have a good switch into that and I've actually I just I just uh, sacked my Tornadus right here. Basically to the Dark Horse Draco, whatever he decides to go for. And I just go for Hidden Power Ice, bringing this guy basically in, r in range of... Uh, basically just getting some damage on him. I d don't actually bring him in range of anything since it's still out of range of anything my manager can do. And he was always in range of Desert Gleam on my Delphox. So yeah, I do just go for Hidden Power Ice here. It's the strongest move I have right here. And after that I basically get a free switch into my uh, Delphox, which can guarantee... Which can do some damage to his team now that outspeeds everything. But he actually does go for U-turn and I Tornadus lives, which is very awesome because now I can actually keep it and preserve it for a uh, Tailwind at a later time. This U-turn was a roll, I have to admit. But as we did go through the Kalk and as we talked after the match, this uh, he was indeed a zero attack timid Hydreigon, and that means that only the max roll of U-turn would have actually done this 20 HP you could saw on my Tornadus right here. So uh, yeah. Thankfully, I didn't got the roll to the deck till I got this roll. Uh, we, the chances are kind of uneven. I would have preferred to getting the roll versus the uh, versus the what you call it, versus the deck till, and still having my uh, Cobalion because then the his threats wouldn't be as much a threat, and I wouldn't have to rely on Tailwind towards speed him since I would still have a Scarfa on my side. But either way, I do get the roll this time. He does switch out into a Scarfa one. I actually got to make a prediction right here and switch out into my Q in Black, not thinking he would go for Moonblast again, having already shown how bulky my Delphox is and it being a great switch in, so I want to predict him to go for the Shadow Ball right here, and in addition, even if he goes for, would have gone for Moonblast right here, I don't want extra damage on my Delphox, because it's basically, once Tailwind is gone, it's my only thing on my team, which can take a hit from the Hydreigon, and I need to preserve basically every single HP on that thing. Either way, he does go for Shadow Ball, since I'm pretty sure that he's choice locked, I am just going to go for a Substitute actually right here, because I didn't want to go for the Prediction Ice Beam or Fusion Bolt, depending if he wants to go into his Durant or the uh, Hydreigon, so I can just go for Substitute, and with whatever he switches out, I can go for the appropriate Fusion Bolt or Ice Beam. Tailwind sadly peeves out right here. 
half of these leftovers turns, I think. Uh, so I don't outspeed this Durant, but one thing this sub does as well allows me to get basically two chances to dodge the Iron Head. Like you can see right here, he does go for the Iron Head. We don't dodge the first one, but that was the non-important one versus the uh, substitute. The more important Iron Head is the one after that. We just go for Fusion Bolt because obviously it does more damage than the Ice Beam to that thing. And... No animation, so I can take a sip. This does very little damage since we are, since we are not heavily invested, but now... This guy is actually in range of a wolf twitch from my Mega Metric, so that is very nice. I just stay in right here, it wasn't worth roosting because Iron Head outcoes me either way. So I just go for another Fusion Bolt and does he hit the Iron Head? He does! His Durant does not stay true to his nickname and hits all his moves. God damn it, Stormtrooper, why are you so good on Joel's side? Either way, I can now go basically. Uh, just switch out back into my Mega Manetric, which is of course faster and like I said he is in range of Volt Switch So we either kill this uh, Stormtrooper with the Volt Switch or we get momentum on whatever he switches in And he actually does decide to switch out into his High Dragon, which is very nice because both that allows me After I see this Volt Switch damage since I'm a modest uh, Manetric This does a very nice amount and actually brings this High Dragon in range of a Thunderbolt And I can see right here after this uh, Volt Switch damage he's at around I want to say 40 something percent, but basically this Volt Switch does already around half of his remaining HP So Thunderbolt will definitely do more than that and uh, yeah, he's in range of Thunderbolt right now And that is very nice because I can just go back into my Tornadoes right here Set up the Tailwind, I basically, now I die to everything and since this is a Choice Scarfed uh, Hydreigon uh, since, uh, since it uh, outsped my uh, Delphox Oh wait, no, that didn't confirm it, but I'm pretty really sure it's a choice guy for Dragon since he left with it and all this good stuff. He has no move, which is not damaging move, so I do go for Tailwind. He does kill my Tornadoes right here, and now it's time to shine for my good boy, the best boy in the world, because we have three turns of Tailwind. And, uh, the only thing which is not in range of uh, Thunderbolt is the Guard War, but since it's an offensive variant, it is two hit KO'd by Thunderbolt. I just click freely Thunderbolt, and basically I get guaranteed two kills right here, because in two turns, I will kill this Gardevoir, and in another turn, I will kill uh, another one. And then Tailwind is gone, and then he has only one one left, which has to be one of his Scarfers, either the High Dragon or the Gardevoir. And in both scenarios, my Delphos can take a hit and will kill the opponent Mon, because like you can see, now he is in range of Fire Blast from my Delphox. So I'm not scared about that. And uh, yeah, he actually does decide to pivot out right here into his Durant, which is of course, oh, not pivot, just switch, which is of course the correct play because Durant is the only one which he doesn't need after Tailwind is gone because my Durant, my military still outspeeds it. So he sacks that and actually decides right here to switch back out into his High Dragon, I think, hoping if he, that he might live a Thunderbolt because I think after uh, looking at the two, oh, he was on, he was on Choice Scarf, it turns out he was on Choice Scarf, but I think, no wait, it was confirmed, no, he wasn't confirmed Choice Scarf because my trade is a prankster. He might not actually been Choice Scarf Tornadus, now thinking about it, but uh, yeah, either this was not a Choice Scarf uh, Hydreigon, or he thought he could lift the Thunderbolt, because theoretically, having Hydreigon around would have been better versus my Delphox, since he would have had a flinch chance with his Dark Horse, whereas the Shadow Ball from Galvo would need a crit. Either way, uh, I can just go for another Thunderbolt team, uh, Tailwind of course out, so will outspeed me being Scarf, but this, uh, he has to lock himself in Shadow Ball that means, and that actually does not even kill my good boy, being the best boy in the world, he got some extra pets and uh, boobs on the snoot after this match, because it did three kills in a row, we kill the Gardevoir and we win 2-0 versus Jolt and the Kansas City Jura Chiefs. Boom, let's pause the video once the images are back. It will not come back, Jolt is gone. But uh, yeah, very nice match. We actually win managed to win 2-0. Not too much hacks involved as well. Like the two rolls, you could argue how much hacks that is. But one time I got the roll, one time he got the roll. And in the end I won, so I don't want to complain too much about that. And uh, yeah, Mega Magnetic, or, uh, Mega Magnetic was not really the MVP since the basically the two MVPs were Tornadus and Delphox. Delphox were for just being so bulky and uh, forcing him to play a certain way and today is just for repeatedly getting the Tailwinds up and dealing with his team. So I want to get the MVP status to that thing. But since now we won 2-0, oh, we are very nicely in the playoff race and actually right now I will spoil how the match of uh, MB versus Geo went. So it should have been uploaded before this, but if you still haven't watched it, now is the time to pause the video or leave the video, watch that match and then come back because I will spoil it in 2, 1. It turns out that Geo did win 1-0 versus MB and the San Diego Chim Chargers. And that means even though he won, 
we are actually clinched for playoffs because Gio had to win 4-0 or higher versus Envy to, to still have a chance to uh, overthrow me in the playoff race. Basically, now even if I lose in, in the next week 6-0 and Gio wins 6-0, he can't overcome me because my differential is just so much better than his. Uh, Joey can still get ahead of me, but since it's only one who doesn't make playoffs, I only need to be bet guaranteed better than one of them. So basically, we are clinched for playoffs. The Bristol Dawn fans are going into the playoffs, and it doesn't even matter if I win or lose versus uh, Joel. Uh, if I versus um, nah, what you call it? Um, oh wait, it still doesn't matter. Yeah, never mind me. It it basically doesn't matter how I play versus Joey. The only scenario in which it matters if I uh, lose. Uh, high enough and Joey actually wins this week. I don't want to spoil this match if I don't have to. Basically, it still depends if I face Envy in the playoffs or if I face Joel in the playoffs because I'm either the fourth seed or the third seed. Or I could potentially even still be the second seed if I manage to win high enough and Joel loses high enough. But second, third seed doesn't matter because they still face each other. But yeah, we are confirmed for playoffs. We are rolling out to the cup. I don't want to meme though. That's what I want to emphasize. I don't want to meme in my last match, what I did last season. Because uh, it's this next week's match still matters a lot for both Joey and Gio. It's a very deciding match for who of the two gets into playoffs. So I still want to take this match seriously and don't want to like meme or have fun or, or something like that. So that uh, jo Joey has, may have an easier time or something like that. Because that would be just unfair to Gio. So we are definitely just tr still trying our best next week. The only time I think you really are allowed to meme, quote unquote meme, in a league match is if, if it doesn't matter for both sides. Like last season, the last match was MV. He was guaranteed playoffs, I was guaranteed out of playoffs. Then it's a match in which you can meme. But in the scenario like this, I will still try my hardest versus G uh, versus Joey. So all you uh, Giantess fans out there, do not fret. Um, I Basically, it all depends on Gio. If he manages to win next week and I destroy Joey, then still has a shot. And I'm sorry for all the bad extents out there, of course, because, yeah, Joey's not gonna have an easy time. I want my revenge real sim. Last time I did, I caught the Tailwind turns. This time, I won through Tailwind. I trained, I uh, pressed the plus on my DS to check Tailwind turns every time. Right now, I can do that with Joey as well. But, uh, yeah, get, get some hype in the comments. We are confirmed for playoffs, so we are rolling out to the cup. That is all from me. Definitely check out Blue Rogue. Link for, links for his in the description. Check out Joel as well for his side of the match. And, uh, yeah, that's basically all from me. I will see you another time. Ciao.